Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander holds out the rose, hoping that the bird will deliver it to Cosima. The nightingale takes the rose and heads for the castle once more. A white rose, how beautiful. It must be from Alexander. How I wish that I could see him with my own eyes. But Abdul will never allow it. He only risks capture by sending me these things, dear to my heart though they are. Fly elsewhere, my pretty friend. Do not endanger Prince Alexander again by taking tokens from his hand. Forgive me, Alexander, and forget me. I cannot return your love for fear that I shall never leave this castle again. Alexander waits in vain for Cosima's nightingale to return, but the bird does not. Could there be something wrong? Or does Cosima simply not welcome his attentions further? Alexander. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Princess, something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very good, Prince Alex. It is always a pleasure doing business with you. Enjoy the mechanical nightingale and feel free to bring it back any time. Thank you. Alexander suddenly gets a very sneaky idea. I can't go on anymore. Without Cosima, I'd just rather not live. Prince Alex, no. It's true. The Wazir has beaten me. I give up. Poison is my last resort. Stop. I am... No. More. Young fool. He's dead. He's dead. Wait until Abdul hears. He'll be so pleased. I told you not to pop in like that. You can learn to knock like everybody else. Sorry. 
sorry, Master. I couldn't help myself. I have great news. Well, what is it? Prince Alexander is dead. He killed himself in despair over losing Cosima. <laughs> what? Are you positive? That young man has proven to be most devious. I saw the whole thing myself, Master. He was really and truly quite dead. Hmm. If what you say is true, it shall be most convenient. You've spent enough time on that little irritant. We must start thinking about the wedding. Anything, Master. Oh, I do love weddings. Well, we do want you to look your prettiest, don't we? Now, Shamir Shamizel, to the lamp with you. Prepare yourself as we discussed. Alexander's heart lurches to life in his chest. Prince Alex! But you... you were... Sorry, friend. I was doing a little acting, I'm afraid. Ah, of course, the strange cloaked man. You are quite clever, and a bit too exciting for an old man. Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? <laughs> There's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. How fair are you, peddler? And hey, lad, have you an old lap for me yet? Excuse me, peddler, but I have an old lamp that might interest you. old lamp, and what a nice traditional design, too. Take your pick of my new lamps. Ah, a fine choice, my son. Here is your new lamp. Good day, and I thank you, sir. Good day. of serving women approach the castle. Ah, Wolf! Oh, serving women! The castle staff is certainly busy today! Hi, Gruff! Gotta move on there, wenches! There's plenty of work left to do before the wedding! Yes, Sergeant Gruff. Oh, 
Those serving wenches are always late. Taking his cue from the serving women he's seen enter the castle, Alexander decides to try a few alterations to make himself more acceptable to the guards. He ducks into the little hut to put on Beauty's clothes. Feeling a little foolish, Alexander slips Beauty's old slave clothes on over his own. Imagine if Cosima saw him like this. Well... Here we go. You there. Girl, you're late. Get a move on before the wazir sees you. Yes. <clears throat> yes, sir. Castle guards lock the main entrance doors behind Alexander. From the open door comes the clatter of pots and pans, yelled instructions, and other busy kitchen noises. Girl, don't just stand there. There's a stack of silver almost to the ceiling that needs polishing for the wedding. Get a move on! I'd never find Cosima. The door is locked. Cerebus Collar, I'll be glad when this wedding is over. Bay, I'm getting mighty tired of this patrol. It's wearied me to the bones. I couldn't agree with you more, Wolf. Who'd have thought we'd ever have to listen to Princess Cosima crying all day long and be ordered to ignore it yet? Something sticks in my craw about the whole thing. The Wazir says that the princess is not herself, says she's half mad with grief over her parents' death. I can see it, the poor might, but still. I agree, it seems cruel to lock her up when she's so heartbroken. Let her out in the fresh air, I say. It'll do her a world of good. I, well, she insisted on the morning period, and it's up today. Thank the stars. It's too bad we couldn't find that nightingale of hers. The wazir says she's been pining for it. <laughs> If I had an ounce of luck, I'd have found it weeks ago. Not only would it cheer up the princess, but the reward the wizirs offered for it would make me pretty happy too, doggone it. Oh well, our luck will definitely be out if the wazir catches a snap in our jaws at our post. Sorry, Wolf. I'll keep my muzzle shut. 